Welcome back to the vlog and welcome here to a really, really beautiful morning here in Goroka, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. We're heading down to Wabo, a like 25 minute flight and picking up a whole load of people. So let's go ahead and get started. And I, I hope the weather's good down there. We weren't able to get a hold of them down there, but according to the satellite, it looks like it's clearing. All right, low start. For 14%, we'll turn our fuel on and then we'll introduce our fuel. And then start counting up. It takes 12 seconds from the time you start to the time you end. By the time the little white needle peaks out. And first start just peeking out at 681. Once it starts coming back down, then you can turn everything off. Generator on. Ram start coming down, throw your alternator on. And then the same goes with the aux bus. Well, the props coming in. Let's go ahead and just go over our checklist. I actually have these now. Um, hopefully I'll have them available by the time this video goes live on my website, but I'll, I'll talk about these a little bit later. I haven't got the toggle switches in them yet, but I think they are really, really cool. And I'll show you guys my new version of this here in a little bit. We've got 680 pounds of fuel on board. I'm completely empty. Our fuel caps and selectors. I checked my fuel caps earlier. Controls, our TAWs, we'll leave enabled for the time being. Our switches and instruments, we are 5,300 pounds, so we'll do 54. So 54 and 63. So 63 if we had to come in, and we'll rotate at 54. I filed for not above 8,000 on the way out there. Eight degrees of flaps, set indicated and verified. Crook Tower, good morning, November Tango Kilo. Request taxi, Wabo, one POV. November Tango Kilo, Crook Tower. Good morning, Ryan. A taxi for runway 17 left, and the back track and lineup. QNH 1019. Morning, Raiden 1019, cleared to back track and lineup 17 left, November Tango Kilo. Throw our strobes, landing, and taxi light on as we're coming onto the runway. And also do our overspeed governor check as we check both ways. It checks out good. More than likely, you might hear some dings as we take off because the stupid cargo door solenoids are going to be replaced here soon, but they haven't yet, so it still thinks sometimes that the door is open. There you go. Hopefully it won't do that on the flight. Usually it just does it on taxi a few times, and then after you're airborne, it doesn't do it. If we're not 50 knots by our taxiway, I'll go ahead and abort on the runway. Just full reverse, heavy braking, cut off, pull off, and shut off if we're going off. We'll just go straight off if we have to. After takeoff, we'll pitch for 85 knots, consider our EPL, our emergency power lever, then consider our feather go to lowest terrain or whatever looks the best at the time. We'll be over 1,500 feet before we make a turn back. 80 full flaps, make my mayday call. Back my door. November Tango Kilo, ready for departure. November Tango Kilo, 17 left, make a right turn, clear for takeoff. 17 left, right turn, clear for takeoff, November Tango Kilo. Our ignition condition flaps 20 fuel and harnesses. Let's complete. We're 25 degrees out at 5,000, so 1330 for 1380. Oh, come on. There you go. There's road. And we'll see if it dings on the way or not. We've got a nice little cloud kind of broken layer right here. We'll see if we can't jump up over top of that, make a right hand turn above that. Once we're over 90 knots, we'll go zero degrees of flaps. And proc prop back to 2,000 RPM. For ITT right at 720 for our best climb. 
and pitch for 99 knots, and that'll give us our best rate of climb. And I think rate of climb will just do fine today. We're making, it looks like we'll be able to just clear right up over top of these fairly well. Our engine inlet back to normal, our igniters are turned off. Truck tower November Tango Kilo, departed time 08. Tracking one nine or four on climb, not above eight thousand. Estimating Wabo three three. November Tango Kilo, not above eight thousand, and contact Mosby on HF six five three eight or nine or eight. Area of HF one two zero decimal one one five miles. Six five three eight nine or eight or one two zero decimal one one five miles. November Tango Kilo. Up to 8,000, we can bring our power lever back and let our torque set in at 1250. It looks like it's going to be all the ridges are really, really clear already. So I'm just going to go ahead and just take the shortest route over there, which goes right over top of Ubai Gubai. I've been there in quite a few years. Morsby 6538, November Tango Kilo transfer. Tango, Morning, November Tango Kilo, one five miles to the uh, southwest Goroka, not above eight thousand. Estimating Wabo three three. One zero zero eight, November Tango Kilo. Oh, I thought I'd take a moment here and just share with you guys uh, what I've been working on for a long time. And the biggest part of it was just trying to find a company that would see my vision and help me out and this, that, and another. So anyways, I'm remaking this checklist we have up here because I think it's revolutionary just for like training and everything, single pilot ops. I really do believe that it is, um, it could be a lifesaver, honestly. Like I've almost landed with my gear up before. I was doing maintenance and we were adjusting the the switch basically to let you know that your gear is up or down and so i went out and flew it like eight times then that day and it was the kind of the last flight of the day and in my flare i noticed my gear wasn't down because i had done it so many times it was just kind of in a hurry and i'm about ready to leave work and stuff anyways that's where these things are super super helpful because you can really quickly see if you forgot one and also the great thing about these is over top of like a paper checklist is you don't lose your place. I mean, you can get halfway through it and then pick back up as you're getting more into the pattern or something like that. So anyways, it's not connected to the plane. It's just Oak Road up onto our dash like this. So there's no wires or anything like that. And I've even made it to where it just doesn't, this, the first version right here does not have any like lights or anything like that in it. Version two and stuff like that, it will have lights inside of it with a switch on the back that you could use at night. Those will be coming out in a few more months because um, I have to redesign it a little bit just to be able to fit in the, the light and the battery and whatnot. So anyways, um, yeah, I've got this one. This one is for, this one is for the Kodiak. And then this one is just for like a general aviation. You could use it from a 152 all the way up to like a multi-engine piston engine and stuff. And if you don't need like items like gear, uh, I got a 152, uh, then you just pass it up. Anyways, yeah, um, hopefully I'll have these on my website. These don't have the toggle switches quite yet, but they are on the way, and I've ordered them like two or three months ago, and it just takes forever to get anything at PNG. Uh, looks like we're gonna have to just climb up over like 8,500 just to pop through this little gap right here, and we'll be pretty much be heading all the way down to sea level. Let me see if I can bring it up real quick. Yeah, pattern altitude is going to be uh, 1,200 feet. I think that's going to put me right around 1,000 feet per minute to get down to that. Uh, looks like maybe even 800 might do it. I guess usually I'm coming in at like 11,000 out here. As I'm coming up to this ridge here, I'm looking at my winds. I've got 10 knots of wind coming out of this direction here. And three knots on my nose. So just kind of seeing where the turbulence will be, more than likely it will be a little bit less, but it'll probably be on this side of the mountain because as the wind hits this, it's gonna create kind of a swirling effect with the wind. We've got my tallest turned off as we cross over top of this ridge right here so Betty's not yelling at me. 
by Gubai is, looks like right below me, but it doesn't look like it's been cut or anything in a couple of years. I wonder, I wonder if it's closed. Well, it's nice and clear on the other side, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue. The winds drop down to next to nothing. And take a look at this lake here. Like, this is an oddity in PNG. There are not many lakes, especially at 8,000 feet plus. I wonder if there's any fish in there. I don't know. Even ridge crossings like this, low to the ground, lots of clouds around, never gets boring. It's so awesome looking. Uh, it looks like it's cleared out all really nice. This morning they had super low clouds. So that's encouraging to see that it's that clear out there. I've already, got my, track. I've already got my descent profile. Betty just let us know it's now time to go down. And I have it set up for 800 feet per minute. So we'll just go on down to 800 feet per minute. Right on down to 1,200 feet. We'll scroll out, on, scroll out on the big screen, and then we'll see this little blue arc where it comes, and that will let me know when I, where I'm going to get to that altitude, depending on how fast I'm going down. Looks like 800 is going to get me there a little bit before I want to, so I'll just do 700. And there's that cargo door again. Take a look at the uh, airstrip chart. Elevation is 170 feet, pretty much sea level. It's flat, 1% slope. Nothing too special about this. We'll land on runway 32, just because the other way, it's a little bit, it's not tighter, but I always just land on 32 because I'm kind of coming in and I just fly overhead and enter into a left downwind for 32. And there's next to no wind down here all the time. We're six minutes out now. I'm gonna go ahead and start up my checklist for landing. Our selectors and brakes, our fuel selectors and brakes, our TAWS is turned off for the time being. Our VREF, like I said, we are just at 54, now we're 5200, so we could come in as slow as 62 knots. Set up. Our lights and inlet. Our landing light and inlet, we can put our engine inlet into bypass once we start slowing down a little bit. You can see right ahead of me, there's kind of a low spot. There's two mountains, one right in front of me and then one further out. And, and there's like a low spot, like kind of like right in that area. So that's what I'm tracking for, so I can continue on my descent all the way down. I think I can get through there right at 4,000, actually a little bit below 4,000. So knowing where these little low areas are, there's another one way down there as well, are really, really helpful when you are have to remain VFR. I flew the MAF years ago on loan. And the airplane I flew was a VFR only. And so knowing where all these tiny little gaps were when the cloud was covering over top of it all the time, was super, super helpful. Well, this turbulence is not helping the case for the stupid door. And yes, it's just the solenoids that think it's open, but if we didn't have the turbulence, it wouldn't be going off. I can almost guarantee you that. We'll hit our OBS button here, turn it to runway 32. If that's what it was. Three, two. I'll be coming in and basically when I turn right around this corner, I'll be perpendicular with the runway. Fly overhead, enter into a left downwind and then come back around. And this one's a little bit tighter of a pattern because there is a mountain right on the side. So I'll just be tracking along the side of this mountain. And then when I get to a certain point, 1.6 miles out, I'll just basically just do a 180, there's not really even a base, it's just a continuous turn right around over the river and in the final. Back to our checklist, uh, our board emergency procedures, if we do have to go around, it's gonna be power up, 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 73 knots, which is our best angle, get out of there as fast as possible, reset our ITT to 740 and maneuver is required.
All stations are Wabo, 120.11, November Tango Kilo, is six miles to the north, passing 3,000 on descent circuit time, Wabo, 2-9-er. Going to start reducing our power. 500. Can't quite see it yet, but you can see the edge of the river. 500. And it's just around the corner of that. Push the prop forward. Our harness, this is just our seatbelt lock so that it doesn't, you can't pull it anymore. When you unlock it, you can pull it out. Orsby 6538, November, Tango, Kilo, in this circuit, Wabo, cancel SAR. SAR. November, Tango, Kilo, Wabo, SAR, what you say when that is? November, Tango, Kilo. All stations of Wabo, November, Tango, Kilo, joining the circuit for a correction at right downwind for 3 2. All stations of Wabo. Wait, no. And all stations of Wabo, November, Tango, Kilo, be joining into a left downwind for runway 3 2, Wabo. Now that we're slowing down, we can throw our engine inlet to bypass. Our SAR is done, 10 degrees of flaps. If you guys want to fly down here on X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Sim, I've got these um, this flight on my Patreon page, and we even have someone build this for X-Plane, so you can actually add it to your game because it's not in there, with some really good details. So I believe Logan built it. So thanks, Logan, for that. There's pattern altitude. Bringing my torque back up to 800, just for my downwind, just so I'm not descending anymore. Take a look at the runway. Nothing special, looks dry enough. I'm just gonna follow this ridge all the way down to where there's like a little section that comes out. I believe it's at 1.6 miles. And then we'll turn around. We want uh, 82 knots. Actually, we'll come slower than that basically because we wanna come in at 62 knots on final. We really want to start turning kind of like at 600, 650 around there. So that'd be 200 feet above, around 850 we'll turn. 500. We'll turn our base, slash final. Its inlets are done. Checklist is almost complete, just full flaps to go. All right, there's 1.6, full flaps. Checklist is complete and we'll just make up. Continuing descending turn. And slow into 62 knots. We went around 550 on our descent. There's 62 knots. It's like Cessna 152 speeds almost. Oh yeah, best power it is actually. Two knots of headwind. A little bit off to the left. Also have a really high nose attitude when you're coming in this slow. It's almost harder to see over the nose. Up on our continuing. All right, we're continuing. Looks like they need to cut the grass out here, man. Oh, yes. be a joy to listen to all the way home hearing the cargo door remind you anyways thank you so much for joining me on this flight down here to Wabo if you enjoy the video give it a thumbs up but uh, it does help my channel grow so leave a comment down below and uh, put out videos twice a week Sundays and Thursdays like I said 
go check out my webpage or my webpage, my website. Um, hopefully, I'll have these on here. If you're watching this at a later time, I'll have them on there definitely. So, if you are a student, if you're a pilot, a single pilot, and fly anything from a piston or whatever else, or if you have a specific plan that you want made, um, let me know and I can see what I can do. So, thanks again and see you guys next time. Turn our blowers off, all of our lights off. Over the switches, cut off the feather. Thanks guys, see you next time.